My name is Hiroja Shai, and welcome to the channel Satoshi Treasure Hunters. This channel is devoted to breaking down the mystery that is the Satoshi Treasure. So let's get into it. What is Satoshi Treasure? Why are we talking about it? And why has it lit a, fl a flame in the uh, Bitcoin community? More so than price or projects or anything out there that is going on within the community during this bear market. Let's start with the beginning. Here it is, April 15th, 2019. Most people are waking up to or finding out throughout the day that the Notre Dame Cathedral is burning in Paris, France. On this very same day, it's tax day in the United States. So they're also experiencing the doldrums of the, the media outlets as they talk about all the, the nuances and mundaneness of this particular day here in the States. But little do people know, there was also another bit of event occurring on this day, a satellite transmission, which contained a message. So let's begin with the beginning. So on April 15th, 20, and what this message was, was the following. Welcome Hunter. This message should reach you at the middle of the fourth month of your calendar year, in the year 2019. If you're reading this, something has led you to search for things bringing excitement to an otherwise predictable world. What you're reading is the first clue in a grand hunt. It is not the first hunt, nor, of course, will it be the last one. But this hunt is mine, and so it is to me that you must prove yourself. The treasure which belongs to the most successful hunters in their clan is neither gold, nor jewels, nor the pieces of worthless paper that pass for money in this sad age. Instead, it is Bitcoin, a digital treasure forged from deep mathematical truths in amount equal to 1 million USD. I have shattered this Bitcoin treasure into 1,000 pieces, using the slitting magic of the wizard Shamir. To resemble it, you and your clan must find exactly 400 of the pieces and meld them back together using Shamir's spell recomb recombination. Once you have done so, the treasure will be irrevocably yours. To test the resolve, courage, intelligence, and savvy of would-be hunters, I will provide the clues as to the location of these thousand key fragments at satoshitreasures.com. XYZ every so often. Some keys will require some deep knowledge of a certain subject, others will simply require the ability to travel to remote locations, perform feats of strength. The difficulty, the difficulty will increase until I am satisfied that I found a group of hunters worthy of taking the prize. However, my first three keys are available to anyone who can make a simple journey to one of the following locations planet side. Of course, if you have an understanding of cartography, you might be able to get these clues without going there. The first key will appear at these four locations. And I'm not going to read the geographical locations, um, but, but we'll get into the keys uh, when we talk about the keys. At April 16th, local time, noon, 12 p.m. The second key will appear at these four locations at April 17th, local time, 12 p.m. And the third key will appear at these locations at April 17th, local time, 12 p.m. Good hunting. So there you have it. This message was broadcast via the Blockstream satellite uh, transmission, which is in beta, uh, is part of um, one of the many different projects that the Blockstream company has produced for the Bitcoin community. Uh, basically what it is, is you can send a file via satellite network that can be received by anyone with a Blockstream satellite receiver, which uh, basically, if you go on their site, you're able to download the program. Um, if you search about how to make uh, a satellite, you can, there's all these different kind of configurations, much similar to, um, you can actually use a Raspberry Pi to create your own Blockstream satellite. 
uh, receiver. But much like uh, the different node configurations out there for the hardware purposes before you upload whichever uh, Bitcoin node um, software implementation you can find out there in the World Wide Web or you can purchase or buy. Just much like the Blockstream satellite receiver, you can also purchase your own satellite receiver. And it, this project is gaming stream and I'm not going to get into the whole block stream wider implication but it's something that people do in fact utilize is a methodology for people to send bitcoin payments uh, a different way than just using the internet it's a, another way another way to decentralize another um in round to keep this um community um, as censor censorship resistant as possible and for everything i discuss um here uh, within the show uh, you will find the links um, in the show notes. Now, credit for the announcement um, goes to Not Gruber. He is very much into um, the Blockstream satellite program. Um, various funny messages that people may transmit through that um, emerging technology. He makes the announcement and breaks it down and basically explains, you know, how to make your own. Uh, satellite and just talks about the project on a consistent basis and I have a link in the show notes for everyone so here we are April 15th this message is broadcast and as soon as not Gruber uh, and kind of announces it to people it slowly begins to permeate through the Bitcoin community so if you're already into box train uh, technology or you follow not Gruber, you might have got that quick heads up before everybody else. Or if you had a satellite receiver yourself, then you would have saw the transmission and you would have gone to satoshitreasures.xyz. And here at this website is a very basic website. You see this breakdown and it, it talks about basically what it is. The hunt is on. Uh, clues here every Sunday noon Pacific time. Um, you can sign up to be notified. You can do it by email or phone number. Uh, the phone number is optional, but the email, if you want to receive any kind of notices or any heads up or even potential clues, and we'll talk about it in the moment, in, you know, later on the show, uh, you can get it through the subscription service. And it breaks down the three keys. Uh, the J key, the business key, and the Mirar keys. So the J key is the first key that was going to have a physical and real world location on these geographic maps to order to figure out and get the particular shard key. The business key and the morals key are two keys that are going to be released on uh, the 17th. Now on the site it says the 16th because that is the very much uh, the uh, internet release. But the physical release where you can go out in the real world and scan these QR codes and, and cobble this key together for you to have, um, that information was going to be released on um, April 17th. So let's talk about what is this. There's rules for the hunters. What is this? A hunt intended, intended to test the mettle of anyone who wishes to add some excitement to their lives. What's the price? Amount of Bitcoin equal to a million USD. Split up however the winning team or individuals decide. How does it work? A wallet containing 1 million USD of BTC has been split into 1,000 keys. Using the splitting magic of Shamir, the combination of the magic of the same wizard can be used to reconstitute a private key with 400 of those splits. How do I join with the hunt? Clues will be released on this site at a regular cadence. Sign up with a your email and phone, uh, phone number, which is optional now, to be formed with new clues are released. If you're serious about winning, find friends who can hunt with you. Find 400 keys on your own will be tough. Good hunting. So we'll get into who's responsible for this. This is released into the wild. People come to this site and people start really like kind of digging into it and trying to figure this out. It starts permeating through the community. And when April 16th rolls around, people really start getting really into it because now you can find the first physical geolocations of these QR codes that will be the first key of 400 that will allow you to eventually get um, a million USD. 
Not only that, but uh, a lot of people get their news information within the Bitcoin community from news articles. So the news starts permeating through this community and people start forming, um, start talking to one another. They, they're a Reddit uh, group subreddit has formed. There's actually an official one, but now there's uh, another one where people are gathering together to figure out these clues. Groups are forming because after all, it's a million dollar prize. There's, there's a good stake of money on the line. And if this address has been in some fashion, either time locked or uh, hidden in a, in a special way to where nobody can access it, a million dollars right now in USD may not be a million dollars by the time all 400 keys are found. It could go up, it could go down. So there's there's a lot writing on here. I mean, what the fuck? What is this? This is what many people within the community, while excited by the prospect of this hunt, of this $1 million Bitcoin prize, people are like, is this a scam? Is this legit, you know, like really legit? Who's behind it? Is it a marketing scheme? Uh, how is this going to really happen? What's going to occur? Is there really, a, you know, the basics, basics is, is this, is there really a million dollar Bitcoin prize? Um, is this going to be too difficult to where many members of the community are not going to be really able to participate because they're not a developer? They are not a coder. Uh, what's going on here? And who's behind it? I will get back to who's behind it and the, the why. Why is this game happening? Um, but there are, in the moment, but there are other people, you know, on a positive side thinking like, is this like the pineapple fund, which happened, um, last year where $55 million was given out, uh, to, charitable organizations and that actually really truly did happen is this a thing that's going to be happening within the bitcoin community uh people are like making jokes about you know this is an easter egg hunt is this like a ready player one kind of situation i mean there are a lot of questions going into it but many people are like you know let's try this out let's see what's going on here let's feel this out to see how legit this is, you know, are there going to be QR codes? Is this even sustainable? How hard is this? Will there be a million dollars? You know, all these questions were being asked um, back and forth through Twitter, different forums, um, even in the newspaper articles. But people, in the most part, were excited. They were like, "Okay, that someone, you know, even if this is a joke or a scam, actually took the time and effort and put a." transmission in the blockstream satellite okay the first three keys it turns out come you know at least for the april 16th day there were qr code qr codes at these locations at the time this person has said uh, we'll find out when we get to talk about what happened on april 17th that there were qr codes at these locations so so far you know on the first day of this it turns out that a lot of it is legit. At the same time, you know, one of the things I want to talk about when talking about uh, an OG puzzler called um, The Legend of Satoshi, which is this painting by coin artists um, in which they painted uh, the keys within this picture here that was widely distributed and if you can figure out where the keys are within this picture, and it is using cartography, then you could earn the Bitcoin from it. I believe it was four Bitcoin. And it was, when it eventually was solved, it was quite a substantial amount of money. I believe the, the solution occurred during the, during the uh, spike in price, if you will. And it took three years for the initial publishing of this particular picture until the bitcoin is acquired so like i said there's while there's a lot of excitement there's a lot of doubts in this community it's very very paranoid especially with some of the things that have gone on within the community within the last 10 years but again people are taking the plunge people are trying to figure this out people are like okay let's see what's going on here
So while people were trying to figure this out, a solution did actually, if actually, did occur where you didn't even have to go to the physical locations, which was part of the broadcast if you know cartography, and the solution for the three keys was made and was actually shared and published for people. We'll get into the solution, but before we get into the solution, we kind of want to talk about who's behind Satoshi's treasure, why are they doing it, and is there a purpose? Is there a hidden agenda? Is it a marketing scheme? Um, some of these questions were answered on the initial, I guess you can say, almost really true launch day of this project. So on April 16th, there was a bit of a media push to coincide with really kind of the big launch where people could go out and go to these physical locations, uh, follow the coordinates, and obtain the first key. Now when we talk about the keys, um, I will tell about those locations and what the keys look like and, the and, and um, how the solution was acquired. But let's talk about the people behind Satoshi's treasure. Right now there's been two people that have been identified as being, um, you might say, the architects or uh, at least the head figures, if you will, for this project. Um, one is Dovi Wayne. Uh, you may have seen her on Twitter. She's pretty active in the Bitcoin community. She and Eric Meltzer have a project called Primitive in which they do a lot of investments. Now, Primitive, the company, I haven't really been able to find too much information. It's kind of hard with these tech head fund type or investment vehicles. Um, when I actually have more accurate information about the company, I will, you know, on a, a later show, delve into it. But these two individuals, along with a series of other individuals, <coughs> combine forces for the purpose of bringing this game about. And Eric Melser appeared on a program called A Citizen Bitcoin Podcast. You can um, find a link to that show. I will recommend it. This is actually a fairly um, well done um, show on Bitcoin. goes in depth, de in depth about the community. Uh, there's a lot of great interviews uh, on that particular podcast. And one of these interviews is Eric Meltzer. And he uh, comes out and he talks about the, the whys uh, of participating in Bitcoin and why he created this particular, say, partner and got a lot of collaborators created this particular game, Satoshi's uh, Treasure. Now, I recommend actually listening to the podcast itself. There are some clues and hints, and I'll get a little bit to more about what he stated in there. But if you're unfamiliar with these two, if you're not really on Twitter, you might know Eric Meltzer more from being one of the, the authors of a newsletter called Proof of Work. Now, Proof of Work is, like, I think, one of the best um, newsletters of gathering and condensing and being very concise about some key projects and key issues or news or people within the Bitcoin community and just breaking it down into a nice, easy, easy digestible, readable newsletter. And um, I've been a subscriber since basically, I would say, the second one. Um, and on that day, uh, April 16th, the Tuesday is usually when the newsletter uh, drops. It had some information about this particular event. Now, <laughs> I wish I'd read it as soon as I got it. But plus, I'm also on the West Coast, so. But uh, I normally just kind of, I either read it later on the week uh, with some other newsletters I have. Or sometimes, if, like, I know or I see something on Twitter or Reddit or the Bitcoin talk forums that something is going on in the community, I will go and I will go look at this letter and see if it's mentioned in there. So, <clears throat> issue number 62, Proof of Work, April 16th. Good afternoon from sunny but ridiculously windy Boston. When I found out about Boston in 2013, it felt like stumbling into a parallel, parallel, <coughs> parallel reality. 
I grew up in a strict diet of cyberpunk sci-fi and it felt like something straight out of a Gibson or Sterling book. I couldn't stop reading about how the protocol worked, how people were using it, shout out Satoshi Dice, and what effects it might start to have on the global community. Since then, as finance bros and other establishment critters descend on the space, a lot of what happened with Boston was exciting to me as an investor, but frankly boring as a child of the necromancer slash snow crash era of sci-fi. FYI, Snow Crash is one of my favorite books. In the course of exploring custody solutions for primitive with Dovey, uh, Dovey Wan, I learned about Shamir's secret sharing. We will eventually try our best to talk about the methodology and the means upon which all these clues and keys um, have occurred. But for now, we're just going to kind of roll with it. An algorithm that allows you to take a secret string of text and split it into uh, M pieces or, you know, many pieces of which, or M pieces of which N are required to reconstruct the original secret. Invented by Adir Shamir, the S in RSA, in 1979, SSS is a time-tested piece of pretty simple cryptography, but it enables a lot of cool things. The more I played around with it, the more I wanted to use it as a basis for a game. An epic hunt for Bitcoin that we spread around the world. So already, he's talking about a key fundamental cryptography solution that's been around, as he said, for a very long time. And his personal influences that have really been pretty much woven into the Bitcoin uh, community. Uh, the, the cyberpunk kind of influences that gravitate people towards this particular um, concept. Bitcoin uh, is very much like credits uh, in almost every sci-fi or cyberpunk book there's a digital form of money particularly modern ones that have been kind of in the later late 20th century and Bitcoin is a very embodiment of that that concept that you might have seen in games and movies and that in books comic books you know anything of that you know that sci-fi cyberpunk material come to life. Long story short, we assembled an amazing team and yesterday sent out the first clue via the black stream satellite, shout out to uh, not globals, that kicked off a global hunt for one million dollars in BTC. The response has been absolutely overwhelming. People showed up to the 10 spots we indicated around the world where, key where keys would appear in mass, some drove over three hours to get to a spot. Others figure out how to brute force the encryption we use and solve the clues without having to travel. Something we, we something which we hope would happen, but thought would take weeks. In reality, it took thirty minutes. And we will um, talk about the solution after we talk about the people. People are forming teams, talking strategy, speculating on the value of the keys and where the next clues will show up. Our high, our high. <coughs> Our, high, <clears throat> our hypothesis that Bitcoin and cryptography enable a new type of online slash offline game experience seems to be getting a val validated. Subreddits are being created. Telegram groups are forming. Our poor MongoDB is getting hammered with science signups. And we're all a bit exhausted after the, this first day. We're also incredibly excited to see what people do with the next set of clues. And then he, he goes into his particular uh, newsletter. So there we have it. You know, Eric Meltzer puts it out there in written format that he's heavily influenced by, you know, the cyberpunks. He's, he's looking to kind of get that feeling. He's kind of, you know, bored, a little restless. And he talks about this um, in depth on the, uh, the podcast where he speaks about how, as an investor looking into projects, he just wasn't gravitated to anything. Um, and he was a little disappointed. Uh, he also spoke about some issues with the current status of a number of different companies, particularly when it came to custodial issues, about, you know, holding large amounts of Bitcoin and the fact that the, the, he, he spoke about how a certain security scenario that he and his partners had, you know, conceived or thought of is like, what does a company do when someone has worked for you for three or four years 
and then abscond with your fronts. And a lot of these custodial places, you know, saying that's like very oceans eleven, uh, that's never going to happen. <laughs> <clears throat> and he was like, okay, yeah, it is going to happen. It is ha actually has happened in this space. It's not years, some of it was like months, but it has happened. You know, the inside attack. What do you do to safeguard and prevent some something from like that from happening? We also talked about... Um, his love for ARG games, alternate reality reality games, um, cyberpunk, his uh, love for William Gibson, his favorite books. And a key thing was that, you know, they're kind of not necessarily wing it. They have plotted out a very, I wouldn't say hard roadmap, roadmap but a roadmap of what it is that they want to do with Satoshi's treasure, like the mechanics of the game, that there will be, you know, real world, real world places you have to go to. You can do a lot of this online. One of the things that they did, and they made it optional, was they wanted to, you know, send maybe like a text-based um, information so that people that gave their phone numbers would get clues or hints through the text message and and things of that nature to, to um, make the game interesting. We also wanted to make it very exciting and accessible for people. But one of the things that Eric Meltzer said that the purpose of this this game was he wanted to be cooperative. He wanted people to have to work in groups. That you couldn't do this alone. He wanted people to be highly engaged with one another, but also globally distributed. So that way... Um, it was fair, it was equitable, but it would kind of force people to kind of form these kind of communities and evaluate, you know, trust and bonds, these things that are kind of tenants within the, the Bitcoin community, or even establish, you know, trustless mechanisms to be able to work together to figure out this prize. And he said, you know, he has tweeted this out, like he says it's not a Bitcoin game, it's just that Bitcoin was the best means of making it possible. And I found that very, personally, very intriguing. Um, one clue that he did provide is that his personal business card, um, he didn't state it, but I'm assuming Derby Wong's personal business card, and some key people with, that were part of the project, uh, if you gather their business cards, it will create one of the keys. So if you're somebody out there that goes to a lot of these conferences, which Eric Meltzer does go to, and maybe you have his business card already, maybe you have the business card that has uh, a piece of a key that when you combine with other business cards, you uh, will have to be, you know, you'll be able to uh, gain a key. And I found that very interesting, just the different little things that they plan on playing to make this happen. They considered uh, producing the public key for the Bitcoin prize, but uh, one of their, um, I guess you can say game makers, said, why don't we uh, develop um, a clue or a key that leads you to the actual uh, Bitcoin address. So you have to gather a bunch of keys that will reveal what that Bitcoin address is. So you know what it is you're seeking out. Um, <clears throat> he said that there will be some adjustments. Um, like he said in his newsletter, he didn't expect for people to brute force so quickly uh, the, the website clue, if you will, and be able to obtain the keys without actually going to the physical locations. But they will make adjustments to basically you know, the strength of the players on the field to make it fair and equitable, but also fun and engaging. And it's not that very long of a, pod a podcast. It's only 38 minutes or so, but highly engaging, worth a listen to. Um, the host is Brady. So, so it's, so you have it out there where, you know, Eric Bouncer being the spokesperson for Stoshi Treasure is saying, you know, we want people to be in a group. 
We want people to be globally distributed. We want people to be very cooperative, uh, figure this out. There will be different levels and different dynamics to the different keys. Uh, the game will adjust accordingly, but it is just a way of really um, educating people about Bitcoin, another way of doing it and making it fun. This may not be the only um, Bitcoin game. Uh, he said there might be little mini prize abilities for people um, on the journey. And it might be something that may not occur, you know, annually, but something that, you know, depending on how long it takes for people to solve Satoshi's treasure, it would uh, occur again, you know, a restart, a re, a a re, not a reorg, but, um, <coughs> or a replay. But this is something that would occur, you know, again. But, um, there you have it. Um, I have a link in the show notes to these uh, their Twitter profiles, as well as the proof of work document and the podcast. But these are the people. They're anonymous. You know, there's only two that have disclosed themselves, and we, as part of the game, have to figure out who else is connected to uh, Satoshi Treasure to obtain their business cards or whatever other clues or keys. Uh, other clues that will lead us to keys um, to help, you know, solve the puzzle. Speaking of the solution, we have the one and only John Cantrell. John Cantrell was the one that was able to brute force and get into uh, the information about the keys. This is something that was anticipated by the game makers, if you will. But as uh, Eric Mattel stated in his proof of work, he thought it might take weeks. He didn't realize it would take, you know, 30 minutes. And that's something that they plan on adjusting as, um, I guess you could say, worthy players present themselves on the field. They'll make things more difficult as time goes on. So this is what John Cantell did. He uh, breaks down how he was able to obtain the the information and and take the keys without actually going to the physical different geo uh, geo locations throughout the world. So today, today, April 16th, 2019 at noon, the first major clues to discovery key number one was set to be released in a few cities. A QR code with the word, words orbital were found at these locations and looked like this. And he uh, presents the um, picture. If you read the QR code with your phone, you will be directed to this URL, Satoshi's Treasure XYZ slash K1. At this URL, you are prompted to input a passphrase to decrypt the first shard. An obvious first guess was not was to try the word orbital from the QR code. Not surprisingly, this worked. This re- revealed a congratulations page and presents the first key shard. Now, we are supposed to wait until April 17th to get clues from the other cities for keys two and three but that wouldn't stop me from digging around with all the new information we had at this time playing not prawn years ago was going to help me here the first thing i noticed was that q1 is URL, and quickly checked to see if q2 k3 and k4 existed i was excited to see that both k2 and k3 already existed but k4 and anything higher did not appear to exist yet the next thing I noticed was that K2 and K3 were both exactly the same setup as K1, where it wanted me to input a passphrase to decrypt the page. I thought this was strange wording as I expected the verification to happen server side. I checked the page source to find that the actual congrats page that reveals the shard was included in the source code, a bit encrypted by the passphrase. And then uh, the source code that runs when you submit a passphrase looks like this, and he just kind of breaks down. Uh, what he did and basically what he did was he used a dictionary brute force to get the other two passphrases and this allowed him to have all three shards for all three keys without actually going to the physical locations and obtaining the QR code. He also released the phrases so that people can uh, obtain the keys themselves so I'm just going to jump down to that. Uh, The passphrase for K1 is orbital which is key one. You know, passphrase for K2 is Cosmos, and the passphrase for K3 is Black Hole, and this will obtain, allow you to have the uh, the shard, uh, the first three shards, the first three keys, that allow you the first three pieces to obtain the 400 out of 1,000 
uh, pieces to eventually reassemble and obtain your grand prize of 1 million Bitcoin. So let's look at what these keys look like. So once you have uh, entered the passphrase for each of the keys, that the clues that um, John Cantell provided in which he displayed the actual um, keys, if you will, uh, the little sack keys that you need to gather together. Uh, this is what they look like on the site. This is the Jade key, this is the Bismuth key, and this is the Moral key. This is what it looks like so once you've uh, decrypt, decrypt the passphrase. You now have what the key looks like. And, and if you look at the map of where all these uh, uh, real world locations are at, it's fairly distributed throughout the world. And these are the various cities here that you can go to. So this is where you can go to. Uh, the cities are, well, for the first key, if you were to do it, I guess, the real world way, is Tenderloin, San Francisco, California, Broadway, New York, uh, 501 West Gregory Avenue, Monterey Park, California, Wines Windsor Building, 220 Ames Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts, and then the key two and key three on April 17th, you have, uh, oh, I'm so going to brutalize this, a uh, 3.3 mansion, Chaoyang, Q, Beijing, China, Central Tower, 28th, Queens Road, Central Hong Kong, uh, Shimbon, Minto City, Tokyo, Japan, uh, Bonjensei, Seoul, South Korea, uh, Notting Hill, London, Unnamed Road, uh, Kampal, Uganda, Camperdown, Australia, and Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, Rito, Buenos Aires, Argentina. So, as you can see from the QR codes, you, if you are going to form a clan, you're going to have to be very distributed as far as people around the world. So if there's any like feats of skill you have to physically do and you can't crack some site and you have to perform a task, you're going to have to have a team that's very widely out there. You're going to be very cooperative with lots of people in order to obtain these various keys. And here is a very clean version of what the, the keys look like from Satoshi's uh, club, treasure club. So there you have it. You have the information out there. You have the first three keys um, found by brute force dictionary, you know, a little hacking, if you will, a little figuring out of the website, a little cartography going on. But even still, when April 17th rolled around, and even during April 16th, People still went to their physical locations because why not? It's fun. It's a game. But you kind of want to trust and verify. What if there's something physically there that is not on the website and you have to go to the actual location and you might see something, something glimmer. You, you just don't know. So you had people showing up on April 17th. And here's this video of, from New York where you had a guy that is... As you can see, in China, you have a, a QR code going on. And apparently something happened in London where maybe the QR code got snatched. So you have some mischief or sabotage occurring where people do not want you to obtain the clue so that you can find the key, which I expect may be... As things progress, might happen more often. You might have people spying in the different groups that are forming. Um, speaking of groups, people are forming them on Discord, you know, Telegram, Slack, through Reddit, Twitter. Uh, people are trying to meet up and meet needs. Some are being 
very specific or wide open and then will whittle people down that either not pulling their weight or maybe they just have too many people in Beijing and they need more people in Australia or out of India. And so they got to cut some people loose. Uh, there might be people that be there that just for the sole purpose of spying for their own little hunt clan. There's, there's all sorts of kind of dynamics going on, but this is still very, very early on. This is like the first week. And so far, you know, as of today, April 18th, um, I'm very excited. I, you know, am kind of happy so far with the information that's come out and the progression so far for the game. We'll see what happens this Sunday uh, when more clues will be distributed out there and we'll see exactly what skill sets people need or have to achieve in order to be able to progress further into the game. Um, as for this show, I would like to, you know, you know, keep people updated about what's going on with the, the hunt, if you will. I will uh, advertise groups that uh, want to be publicly advertised on this on this show, so people know like what clans they might may want to join up. Whatever clues or solutions that might have uh, publicly publicly be disclosed, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it. If uh, there's a news article or a particular event or something happens, I'm gonna talk about it. I will interview people that I think are relevant to towards the hunt. Particularly, you know, breaking down what, uh, Shamir's secret, you know, sauce cryptography that they're using to break up the, uh, Bitcoin, what that actually means, that the cryptography means, you know, someone to break it down in a simple format for everyone to understand. Um, but overall, I think this is something very good for the space. Um, you know, in the bear markets, Things get weird. Things get very interesting. Things get a little bit fun. You know, they, the space kind of, I want to say, it, you know, it contracts and then it kind of collapses in and it gets to that core. And this is, this is something that this, you know, playing games and engaging with each other in a very fun uh, manner is something that happened quite often very early on in the space. There were the, the people giving out in crazy fashions, uh, Bitcoins very early on. And as the value kind of went up, it didn't go as quite often. Um, of course, you did have last year, the big thing was the pineapple fund. I do think that you're going to see more and more people like the pineapple fund and even like this game happening where people are going to use their Bitcoin wealth in this very unique manner to distribute it widely to people in a, a fashion that um, allows for Bitcoin's value to be displayed for the individual to receive that value, but also to be in a, you know, positive, worthwhile and educational manner that I guess you can say in a sense will have some lasting impact in the overall, overall global wealth of people or well-being if you will but that is it for now uh, my name is uh Hiroja Shibe and this is Satoshi's treasure hunt and I will be trying to post these episodes every Friday it's really going to be based upon how the game goes like where the clues are going how they're being distributed I will adjust accordingly but expect I would say every Friday for a like full in-depth of the week episode and then a small episode on Sunday if a clue is distributed. So thank you all for listening and have a good hunt.